hard way to earn a W, but uh, what was the feeling down the stretch in the huddles as you kept making the comeback? Just said, just keep getting stops. We got one possession at a time. You know, we gave up a 40-point quarter, and that's unacceptable. You know, if we want to continue to grow, um, but we showed growth in the fourth quarter, and that's huge for our team, being a young team, to be able to go through the adversity that we went through tonight against a team that's you know one of the best offensive team in the league. They put up 30 plus assists on us, but we just kept fighting. We kept getting stops. We kept executing offensively, and we walk out of here with a win. You were switched to Rondo, which we've seen you do in the past. Do you think that that changed things up for them a little bit? Well, I would like to. I like to think so. You know, um, you know, I'm able to use my length and uh, you know not allow him to get into the paint as much and just try to contest the shots. And you know, we got the timely stops in the fourth quarter uh, that allowed us to get back into the game. How vital was it the way Kyrie started the fourth, scoring 12 points in about I think three minutes? That's how special he's a special guy, special talent. And he can do it at any time. You know, um, you know, and you know, that was key. You know, and also what was also key was he's being aggressive and he, he allowed us to shoot free throws from like I think it was eight and a half on. So um, and that was big. Can you talk about your process in deciding to take over towards the end of the game? Yeah. Scoring. Uh, well, Kyrie told me to be aggressive and stop being so passive early in the fourth quarter. He got it going, so I kind of laid back and let him go. He came to me and said, be aggressive and uh, make some plays. So I told him all you got to do is talk to me. And, and I answer. And you like that when teammates are telling you that, right? Yeah, I've always liked it. I'll always like to be challenged, from, either from a coach or from a teammate, you know, and, uh, and then I was huge. How big was Joe Harris, the three, and then the final stop on Ron? He's huge, man. Um, Joe Harris is going to be a big piece for our team. He's going to have his rookie mistakes. We all know that, but... You know, mistakes can be covered when you play hard, and that's one thing that kid do, and uh, we love we love that we have him. Does the Boston atmosphere bring out the best in you? Um, I don't know. It's um, it's a town that loves sports, that knows sports. Uh, they love their Celtics, uh, their Patriots, their Bruins, and so on and so on and so on. So um, to be in a, a town that um, appreciate, you know, uh, sports in general, it's always great to be here. Did you say anything about Gronkowski? Yeah, I told him he got a pair of shoes of mine that I don't even have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had them on the night. In the third quarter, you mentioned it was unacceptable. What was really going wrong? What the pets they were? You guys well, doing? we came out and uh, allowed him to take a lot of uncontested jumpers. Olenek, I think, had three or four uncontested jumpers from three and from the elbow. Uh, you know, they got on transition and they started to get comfortable. It was a loose ball on the ground. We didn't get on the ground for it. Um, there was a play where Kyrie got back and, and tipped the ball away, and we didn't and we didn't come up with that. And, uh, you know, those are plays that's unacceptable. And that allowed him to get 40 points, allowed him to get that lead. Is it just a mindset right now defensively? Why for three quarters it's not there? If I had to answer, we were starting in the first quarter. You know, it's a process, and we learn from it. I think, um, you know, for our team, we have to see uh, what we do well, what we don't do so well. It's easy to say it, but, you know, I kind of used this analogy earlier this morning that, um, you know, right now I feel like, you know, the young guys are like my kids. They, they're not accustomed to reading textbooks. You know, they, they like the iPads, you know, and uh, you got to show them, you know, it looks better for them. And, it's, you know, that's the process that we're in right now. Uh, you can't just tell them you got to show them on film and, and, and see, you know, when they do it right, you know, this is the result of it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was key in the fourth quarter that we, we kept up the pace. What's your general take on the Celtics? Um, I think they're going to surprise a lot of teams and they're better than, uh, you know, what the critics said coming into the coming into this season. I think uh, you know, Coach Stevens has done a great job of putting a system in there that allows everyone to feel comfortable, to feel uh, loose, and play a great style of basketball. And 30 assists, and they're, I think they're top three in the league in assists. They're top three in the league in scoring right now. It's a, it's a great brand of basketball that they have here so far. How can you guys overcome the lack of rim protection? Say that again. How do you guys overcome the lack of rim protection that you guys have? It's not that. I mean, I didn't. We didn't have a rim protection in Miami either. You know, you. you Defensively, you have guys, when someone breaks down, someone covers for you, and the backside covers for that guy. Um, you know, you look at a lot of championship teams. It wasn't, I mean, San Antonio, it, you know, as great, great as Tim Duncan is, he's not a, he's not a guy that's going to be blocking shots above the rim. The, uh, the Bulls in the 90s, you know, Luke Longley and Rob and those guys, they weren't up top blocking shots. It's a system that you put in, and it starts at the point of the ball, and then everyone talking behind her, and everyone flying around covering for guys when they break down.